uh, in the week, she zoomed in on a picture. And if you look right over my shoulder here, there is a Texas Forever sign that she put up here just for us so that we'd be able to, uh, to see it. So we wanted to make sure you saw that. We're going to get it out next week. It won't be there. But something else I will have is that we're going to be able to have a, something in the picture of the University of Oklahoma to get her back just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide it. It's going to be kind of discreet. And so something I want you to do is if you can find it, let me know by putting it down on the comment section so that we'd be able to see and you find out where that thing is from OU. Uh, but we're going to have a good time tonight. I uh, want to encourage you to uh, put, us, uh, put comments on down at the bottom so that I can see who's here. Uh, and I'll be getting a phone here in just a minute so that I could be able to see your comments. And so, uh, yeah, here you go. John's going to help us out here. Ah, thank you. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Thank you, John. All right. Oh, we already got some people there. Martha, hi. Carrie is watching. Linda, good to see you. Susan, Barry, uh, Melanie. Man, thank you all for watching. Uh, glad you're here. And uh, We're going to have a great time tonight. Tonight we have a couple things that we're going to be doing. One is, uh, just in a little bit, we're going to be filming, uh, doing an interview over the internet with Anthony Yates. Anthony is our uh, is our Awana director and so a commander and he's going to be coming on we're going to be talking a, bit, a little bit to him about things that are going on in their life and how Awana is going to continue even though we're not able to uh, meet here at the church then also after that John Song our uh, producer director and everything technical is, is he's doing tonight but he's going to actually be on this side of the camera and so he's going to be talking about our student ministry and we're really excited about doing that so we see others are joining in uh, Susan good to see you uh, Gina uh, Paula Chamberlain uh, Paula good to have you here with us uh, y'all just keep letting me know you're here and we're just going to have a great time tonight uh, Teresa Warner uh, hello and Will good to have everybody here what we're going to be talking about tonight just a little bit is this this quarantine man this the quarantine I don't know if it how it's affected you but it's kind of caused us to do some crazy things around here one of the things that I've noticed is that uh, it's driving me crazy because all I get to do is drive from home to the office back home now in between there somewhere is a Wayne stop for a drink uh, to get through the day but basically we're seeing the same seven people that we've seen for almost the last week and a half now so we are trying to quarantine ourselves off a little bit. Uh, so that's kind of crazy. But what I want to do is I want to post something for you is that I, I want to hear from you on some things of how it's affecting you. This crazy stuff you're having to do because of quarantine. Won't you type them in here and let everybody read them and let's just see, see how this is affecting everybody else. Now, I want to share with you, though, some things that I've learned over this time of basically lockdown. I want to share four things very quickly. Uh, that I've learned. The first one that I've learned is I'm an awful binge watcher. There's a term now that has come out since all this live stream and it's binge watching. That's where you watch the same program over and over and over day after day after day trying to watch 27 years of scenes all wrapped up in one long viewing and I'm telling you that kind of drives me crazy. But in the binge watching, another thing that I've learned is I learned a valuable lesson about this guy that's over on my right, Father Brown. One thing that I found out that watching Father Brown with my wife and my daughters is that he, this man is ministering. He's a Catholic priest, and he's ministering in the most, I've got to determine, is the highest crime rated place in the world. It's a small place over in England, but every week, somebody in that little community dies, is murdered. I eventually asked my wife, I said, do you think anyone's going to survive this? But I've learned that, man, it's a high crime rate. But secondly with that is that I've also learned that if you're over there with them, do not eat or drink anything because the, the probability of you being poisoned is going to be quite strong because somebody, that seems to be their murder of choice. And so I've learned about Father Brown. The third thing that I've learned from this quarantine is that we in America pay a lot of money, spend a lot of money on the FBI, on the CIA, NCIS, all these other great crimes uh, solving people. But all we really need, I've learned this on this binge watching, is we need to hire this girl, Veronica Mars. I have found out this woman, young teenage girl, I found out now she's an older woman since this is an old show apparently, but this girl can solve 
any mystery at all. She can track things down, solve crimes. As a matter of fact, she even did it one day when the FBI was there with her. They couldn't do it, but man, Veronica Mars, she was on the job. So she, we we're, we just we need to do away with all of our other crime syndicates. Just just hire Veronica. I think she'll do a good job. One thing else I've learned about her is this girl uh, is never in class, never goes to school, always wandering around. But you know what? She even got a chance to go to Stanford. That's pretty impressive. Not only that, but she never is at work, but yet she always has a job. So I've learned that. And the, the last thing that I've learned, the fourth thing is that, you know, Oklahoma has never had a great image in the, in the United States. For some reason, we've always been known as a small state, a backward state, uh, it's kind of slow, even uncultured. As a matter of fact, there was a time when I went out to L.A. to see uh, Sherry that uh, I went into a gym trying to get a week's membership there. And I walked in, told the guy, I said, hey, I said, I want a gym membership. And he said, oh, you're traveling? I said, yes. He said, where are you from? And when I, I told him Oklahoma, and no lie, the very second I said from Oklahoma, he looked at me and he said, things are really slow out there, aren't they? And I thought, dude, you got to be kidding me. So anyway, we, we, we've not known for having a whole lot of uh, culture here, but we've gotten better. We had gotten a little bit better because we have great football programs. We have great colleges. We even have the Oklahoma City Thunder. And man, our image was peaking up. But something I've learned on bid and watching is we, we, we're building up and then all of a sudden along comes this guy, the Tiger King. Oh my goodness. This is Joe Exotic and he is sweeping the nation. And now all of our image of Oklahoma is dropping again. This is what people think about when they think about Oklahoma. But something that I realized too, that you know that uh, this man ran for governor just a few years ago. And the thing that blows my mind about him is 664 people actually voted for this man. But you know what? I got to say something though. Thank you, Colorado. Because he also ran for president around that same time. And in Colorado, the only place he could get on, 962 people voted for him. So thank you, Colorado. More people voted for him in Colorado than did in Oklahoma. So anyway, hey, that's what I've been learning over this quarantine. This has got to end sometime soon, amen? Uh, we got to get back to life as normal and, and just learn some new things going on. But it's, it's just, I, I wanted to share with you some things that, that I've learned. I also looked down through here, and bless you, and uh, from uh, Mrs. Dupler and Kathy, Marie, thank you, Dwayne, Layton, good to see you. Uh, just uh, glad to have all of you joining us. Well, what we're about to do now, we're going to do something that I've never done. We're about to interview somebody over the internet. Well, as a matter of fact, this is only my third interview I've ever had. But we're going to interview Anthony Yates. And so uh, Anthony is our uh, director of, of, our, of our WANA group. And so uh, we're about to sw switch over to Anthony. And so Anthony, are, are you there with us? Is he there? I'm here. Ah, there you go. Hey, Anthony, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Good, good. Well, it's good to see you. Hope everything's going well for you. Uh, how, how, how are you handling the, the quarantine? Well, uh, we can see how the family's doing right now. Come on around here, everybody. <laughs> so we've got a, uh, a, uh, <laughs> re, uh, no, a chin strap penguin. We got a goldfish. And then back there, we got a panda. So oh. we're we're having a good time here uh as you oh. might imagine not getting the uh, normal outlets for uh, uh things like going to church and sports and such uh, we're bouncing off the walls a little bit yeah well hey guys how y'all doing Mark? are y'all doing okay y'all can, can answer you don't have to do the yes. animal noises <laughs> all right oh, well y'all look really cool is this part of the awana Thing for tonight yes tonight's noah's art night so we're actually uh families are encouraged to uh, uh show pictures share pictures of the uh, of, uh, of our kids uh in their favorite um outfits um or i'm not favorite outfit favorite animal uh oh, okay we're trying to do that little fun things each week that we can share uh and connect when we can't be together physically well good good I, I know uh you had mentioned to me that because you, you you guys already do homeschooling and you do a lot of work from the office that you didn't think this quarantining would affect you 
as badly, but then you realize yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> you were yeah. wrong about that? Yeah, I was wrong about that. Uh, you don't realize how much that connection you get at church and other events and uh, for the kids is, is an outlet when, uh, when you're just around the house all the time. Um, life is different, uh, very different. And so we've had to adapt to that. Like, like oh, some great. other people watching have. Yeah, yeah, it, it's been a little crazy. I've been talking about some of the things that I've had to go through being quarantined and seeing about basically the only the same seven people week after week. But mm -hmm. you know, I know that uh, you, we were all kind of disappointed with the way things have gone and have to cancel all of our programs and different things. Uh, but I, I know that you're working and you and your wife are working to keep our WANA program going so the kids would have an opportunity to finish up wherever levels they were working in, right? Yes, uh, and each week we're putting a do it at your home um, agenda up on the uh, our parents connection. Uh, well, agenda is wrong word. It, it, it's a walkthrough. It's a lesson plan, so parents can work with their kids, keep them right on track. Uh, we supplement that with videos. Uh, for example, our cubbies have one about their lesson. The TNT has one about their lesson. Uh, Spark, since they don't naturally have videos, we have. Um, we're doing Heroes of the Faith. Uh, last week we talked about George Mueller. This week's video is on Gladys Alward. Um, so, so we get to learn about uh, some of the many heroes in faith and, and, and what we can do. Um, they, um, so a little bit of fun out there. And then uh, parents are able to just do the section with their kids, email an address we've set up that's in that um, so that they can continue to progress through that book. Um, most of the kids, you know, so many kids are, are near finishing their book. Uh, we're just very excited about that. Uh, and this will help them finish it. Um, if they don't have access to parent connection, though, they can get that by contacting the church secretary and get at it because it is a private Facebook group just for our, our, our parents of our, of our children in church. But that's the parents connection and can be gotten through the church secretary. OK, so basically um, everything that you're going to be doing to help them get through uh, through this year, you'll do online and they can, again, through the private section of our Facebook page. Right. Yes, and they can still do all the stuff like want, uh, earn a want of shares to get to participate in a share shop that we'll have when all the quarantines lifted. We've already got the awards because you know, a lot of kids have already finished their book and anybody that I think can finish it, we've already got an award for you. So um, we're not going to let this stop us. Um, we're just going to we're going to get stronger from this. And, you know, I'm excited to see what, what comes out of it. OK, good. And one of the things that, that we want to do is encourage people to realize that we are at this point still scheduling for uh, for the, 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 the banquet and, and all that. We're still hoping uh, to be able to get that through. Right. Oh, I'm hoping it's going to go right on schedule. But if it doesn't, we'll still be able to schedule it afterwards. We're, we're, we're going to uh, see this through. Amen. All right. Good. Was well, there anything that you would like uh, to share with our people? Maybe there's uh, last time we did it last week, everyone that sat on the couch and visited with me. One of the things that I asked them was uh, what maybe some scripture that you might have or something that's meant for you and your family to maybe be an encouragement uh, to just not only our one of people, but also uh, for just anyone watching. Do you have something on your mind that you'd like to share as an encouragement? Yeah, a lot of, uh, oh shoot, my, let me just see here. All right, is my video back? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, locked up. It went into my uh, iPad, went into uh, sleep there. Um, no, I, I, a lot of verses went through my head when, I, when, you, when you told me you were going to ask me that question. But I, I went with um, one that my wife has used a lot during this period, and that's Lamentations 3, 21 through 23. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Um, uh, we're not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Um, and, and from that, I mean, there's a lot, a lot in there, but I would say that this is new and unique to us, but it's not new and unique to God. Um, he can see us through this and we have faith that, you know, uh, you know, this isn't a surprise to him. He is in control even when we feel out of control. Amen. Amen. Well, that's one thing that I hope that, and, and that's the reason I think that we're even doing what we're doing here uh, through this live stream and, and Facebook live and interviewing people from our church. Because one of the things that I want to do is keep us all connected and to give us a, some lightheartedness, some things that give us hope that we're, we're not giving up. We're still looking forward and trying to uh, progress with everything that God has laid on our hearts. Because as you said, he didn't, he's not surprised by this. And if we were able to keep going, uh, keep things and keep the church connected because that's really 
uh, going to be the key to this and come out on the other side uh, even stronger and more uh, uh, more able to, to accomplish what he wants us to do. And I appreciate uh, what you and Carrie are doing. Uh, I want to encourage you to keep it up and uh, look forward to what we're going to be doing. And if, with the banquet stuff, as you said, we can reschedule. Uh, we will get through this and we'll, we'll do it. So uh, I appreciate you. And any, anything else you want to share before we close out? No, in the spirit of keeping it light, there is a April Fool's joke hidden in our uh, in our uh, uh, agenda or what I what, what, uh, the do the lesson plan for this week. So we'll see if any of the TNTers catch uh, what's on their agenda. Okay, well, good. Well, we'll be looking forward to that. And if you guys need anything, and let us know. And y'all, y'all stay safe and uh, just enjoy uh, being locked together as much as you can. Okay. Will do. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Anthony, for joining us, and I appreciate it. Uh, God bless you. Y'all have a good evening, okay? You as well. Bye. Right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Well, Anthony, thank you for that. I appreciate uh, him in taking part in this interview. And, and it is kind of odd to be interviewing somebody over the, uh, over the Internet like this. But at the same time, uh, this is only the third interview I've ever done in my life anyway. Uh, we do have some other people joining us. Uh, Shelly is here. And, uh, she, she said I could take over for Kelly and Ryan the next time they have a, a, a sub host. Well, hey, sign me up. Uh, we also say, oh, Joellen, but they can't play my games. <laughs> well, Joellen, maybe you can teach them some games that they could be playing over the Internet. Uh, winter Arts, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the Winter Arts. Carrie has posted some things on that. I know Kathy asked about that. Uh, so we are going to be able to do it, and Carrie, uh, Carrie is responding now to that. So we, we will cover some things uh, in that. So anyway, again, thank you, Anthony. I appreciate it and, and uh, hope that you all got some information on that. But please join us on our Facebook pages uh, for our children's, for our preschool, for our youth, uh, everything that, that's involved in all those. Remember, you, you can't go on uh, those just through our Facebook. You have to be invited. So if you want to be a part of that, contact us here at the church and then we will send you the information and give you the permission to join in on there, okay? Well, here in just a few moments, John is going to be coming and sharing with us. But before he does, I want to uh, take just a moment and read a verse of Scripture and share a thought with you. And then at the end, we're going to uh, have some prayer time. So if you would like to uh, write down some comments or uh, prayer requests, something that we can be all be praying for, uh, go ahead and put those down. Uh, as well uh, on, on your comments, and we'll be praying for those. But the, what I wanted to do tonight is I wanted to read a verse of Scripture, and it's found in Psalm 63, verse 1. And it says, O God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. You know, as Anthony had mentioned, that God... Uh, wasn't shocked by this, and God is desiring to help us through this time. And in my Bible, the title of it is Psalm 63, Joy and Fellowship of God, but the, the heading of that is a Psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. You know, as you look back through the Bible, you'll see that there's two times that David was in the, the wilderness of Judah, and he was in the desert of Judah, as some translations would say. And the two times he was there, the first time that David was there was when King Saul was looking for him. King Saul was after him, looking to try to uh, gather him up and, and kill him because he, he viewed him as a rival. The second time that David was in the desert of Judah, we see it was when uh, his son Absalom had come and tried to take over the kingdom and David had to flee out of those. So as we're looking here that these two times that David was in the desert, there's three opportunities there we see was that he was in trouble and at this point he was literally pouring his heart out to God. So my friend, no matter what's going on in our lives today, just remember that God is desiring for us to call out to him. We're entering into strange times and uncertain times. But just remember that we want to cry out to God as David did in those two deserts. And we're, we're possibly in a, a desert time right now. So I want to encourage you to call out to God. The second thing is that he, he found God's presence there. Whenever he cried out to God, God's presence was there. And some time ago I preached a message on what it means to have God's presence. And man, in God's presence there is peace, there is assurance, there's confidence, and, and man, there's hope. 
So I want to encourage you today while we're in this desert to realize there is hope for us today. Seek God's presence. And the third thing, it was God was encouraging him to keep going. So today what I want to do is I want to encourage you as your pastor, as your friend, that in this desert time that we're in, don't give up. Keep going. God is, is there with us. His presence will give us peace. His presence will give us confidence. And His presence will give us some hope. So I, I don't want any of us to, to feel like even though we're quarantined together uh, or separated, uh, we're having to do things we've never done before, deal with issues we've probably never dealt with, that today we're in the desert, but man, God is still there and He wants to give us peace and hope. So I, I want to offer that for you today. And you find that, you find God's presence, not in just saying, God, help me, but God, I come to you in Jesus' name. Because it's through Jesus that we go to God. Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That no man goes to the Father except by him. So if we're going to find God's presence in our life, we're going to find God's peace and confidence. It's going to be through Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage you tonight to go and turn to Jesus. And in this desert time, God is still there. So I want to encourage you with that word, and I appreciate you uh, listening in. And, and so we, we have more people that have joined in, and we, th we thank you uh, for doing it. Hey, there's a, uh, one of my best friends in, in high school, and, and since then is uh, Rick. Good to have you joining us tonight, man. Uh, good, to, good to have you tuning in for, with us as well, and honored that you, uh, you joined in with us. Well, we, we've got through the scripture and stuff. Next, what I want to do very quickly is I'm going to bring our youth director, John Song, who is now also our, man, he's our director. He's my producer. He's basically everything there except sitting behind the desk. Well, John is going to step in with us now, and we hope that you're going to be able to, uh, to stay with us for just a little bit longer. So, John, if you would, come on in. Hey, there's Dave Myers. Dave, man, thank you for joining. Dave's one of my best friends. Rick and I met him at Connor State College, man. Brother, love you, man. It's good to, good to have you all joining us tonight and seeing what ever became of, of that college boy. Hey, man, here I am. Uh, that's all I got. Anyway, John, thank you for coming and being a part of this uh, with us tonight. Thanks for having me. I mean, I'm here, but uh, <laughs> letting me on, uh, letting me uh, be inside the yeah. show, I guess. Yeah, John is always here because we don't have this if John's not here. So, so we definitely have to have him. Uh, we've been honored to have John as our as our youth director, and uh, John's been with us now for almost three years, right? Almost, three, almost yeah. three. Wow. Time's I'm fine when we're having fun, huh? Is. Yeah, we're having a ball. Uh -huh. Hey, I tell you what was really funny with John. Uh, John wasn't going to settle for just the little things of life, man. When John came on, we were he had just graduated college. This is his first job in the ministry. He got married and started teaching at Central Middle School. That's math. Correct. Yeah. Man after my own heart right there being a math <laughs> teacher. But, man, I'm telling you, John doesn't do anything small, man. That, that, <laughs> the first few months of your life here was... Pretty rough, huh? Yeah, it's a, it's a big transition. I think all of that change that you mentioned kind of happened within three months. Yeah, the span of three months, <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I either go big or go home, and uh, most of the time I go home. But this time, I guess I stuck it through. <laughs> oh yeah, but he, well, we hope you stick it through, yeah. especially your wife. I'm sure she hopes you stick this through. Amen. Absolutely. Tell her you're gonna stick it through, right? I'll stick it through. Yeah, there you go. All right, but John has done a great job for us, and. Uh, he's really brought about some changes and some different things that we're able to do that we weren't able to do before. He's brought in a, a whole new dimension to our youth ministry, but not only to our youth ministry, but John to our to our church. And so I want to commend you for that and thank you and, and let you know that we are honored to have you as part of our staff here at First Baptist West. Uh, just what I want to do is, is ask you, what are you doing differently through this quarantine time? Um, so... <laughs> As you know, um, as you just mentioned, I'm a, I'm a teacher, and so uh, for the past two weeks or so, uh, I've just been giving a really luxurious break, uh, <laughs> in my point of view, uh, but we're picking things up again at the school, um, but uh, just kind of fighting through day by day, you know, fighting the boredom, uh, and uh, trying to find a productive way to spend my time, I guess, would be the best way to do it. All right, there you yeah. go. I, you know, I, I remember, I tell people, I said, I always remember when spring breaks and fall breaks and, and these type times uh, meant something to me when I was a teacher and a coach. Mm -hmm. But now I can look back at everybody and go, boy, you teachers, man, y'all have it made, all right? Yeah, am, yeah. I, am, I, am, I, am I right? Yeah, these teachers, that, no, I'm just kidding. Being a former teacher, 
I know what they do, <laughs> but I like giving them a hard time now that I'm on this side of the, of the thing. So anyway, so what are, you, what are you doing as far as our youth ministry? What are you trying to accomplish over this, this time that you're not being able to be with our students? Um, so as you know, students, these kids are probably light years ahead of adults when it comes to technology. <laughs> and, uh, and they'll pick it up real quick. But I still want to take my time with it so every single student kind of gets nurtured. And um, more than the students, I think it's a big transition for our teachers. And so I'm trying to take it a a step-by-step basis. We're doing our Sunday schools. Uh, Our our lesson is going to be formatted into one video that's shown on Sunday mornings. Um, And that's available at any time on Sunday so that, you know, if if kids want to be with their parents or their families uh, for their Sunday schools, they're, they're more than welcome to. Um, and they can also watch that video. Uh, also, every Sunday school class that we divided, our seventh and eighth uh, grade class by uh, Billy uh, and Crystal Lewis and Carol Page, um, they're in our own separate group chat afterwards where they discuss the lesson and uh, points that they discussed and points that they learned. Um, also, our ninth and tenth grade class, which is headed by Teresa and Mike Warner and uh, Chuck Gervin, they also have their own group. Um, as well as Paul and Melanie's class in the uh, 11th and 12th grade. And so it is a big challenge for these youth because I feel like um, one of the things that kind of sets our youth apart um, from the world is that they have a love of fellowship. They have a love of intimate and close fellowship, not distant social media fellowship. And I think there's a, a very big value in the face-to-face interactions that these kids get to have and, and they share, um, and that they're really missing it, I think. Okay. Well, what, what, are you, what are you doing as far as I know with the Zoom and different things that we have going on? Are you going to be able to utilize that or connection, as you talked about, through the, the media? multimedia that they have. You mentioned something in the staff meeting about gaming or... No, absolutely. So uh, starting this Friday night, uh, every Friday night we're going to do a game night that I'm going to broadcast. Uh, it's going to be a Jackbox game if you ever heard of it. And so if you're not directly involved in the round, you could still join in as an audience member and still kind of play along. Um, but I'm going to get that video posted and I'm also going to walk you through on how to get that um, started up. But that'll just kind of be as uh, as fun as much fun we can have without coughing on each other, <laughs> <laughs> and which is what we're really yeah, trying to. That's not really do, what right? we're trying to avoid. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to be coughing on one another. So I, I want to encourage you, parents, and to the students, men, uh, what, whatever we have going on with our youth uh, student ministry, uh, to become involved in it and and go online and, and do the things that, that we're trying to do to keep us keep us together. Now, uh, before we wrap up here real quick, uh, end of year, school year stuff, uh, how are we dealing with uh, for our seniors and different things like that through our youth group? Uh, so first things first, let me express my condolences if you're a high school senior at this point. Amen. <laughs> your, uh, your downhill walk down memory lane um, has been postponed or canceled actually right. um, but you if you are the parent of a high school senior you should have received a letter regarding um, what we're gonna do with their graduation celebration and so especially now that they can't really celebrate it um, in their schools as much as they can uh, we want to open up that avenue where you get to celebrate with them at, at least within the church um, and so we're aiming on May the 17th but a letter should have been gone out to you uh, with details. If you did not receive a letter and you have a high school senior that goes to our church or have, have ever gone to our church and you feel like you want to make sure that they're included, please reach out to us. Uh, you can call the office. You can message me or the church on Facebook. Uh, whatever it is that you need to do uh, because we want to make sure that they're recognized um, and that they're celebrated for their ac- accomplishments as well. All right. Um, sorry, yeah, one no, more thing. Yeah. Um, summer camps. Um, we're finishing up the enrollment process on summer camps, and then I will try to get those uh, registration uh, paperwork uh, out to you as best as possible. Um, one of the things that I do want you to consider is that um, if you are unable to print or fax or anything along those lines, uh, please let me know. Um, you Most of the youth parents should have my number by now, right. but if you don't, uh, please contact the church and they'll, um, they'll connect you to me. But if you have a student that wants to go to Falls Creek, but you don't really want to risk picking up that paperwork, let us know. We'll mail it to you if I have to. I'll um, I'll go to your house and I'll 
kind of throw it at your door if yeah. I have to, uh, whatever it takes. So um, uh, we're, we're here for you guys. Right. Yeah. And one of the things that, that you need to be aware of is that we have been praying for our, our summer events mm -hmm. uh, with all this that's going on. And so I have been in contact with some people uh, in the know and what they're looking at trying to do is to by uh, the middle of, of May, mm -hmm. they're going to try to get uh, make a decision on what we're going to do with Kids Camp, Falls Creek, different things that we're going to be doing there. So you'll be getting notifications on all that. But as of right now, we're going to plan and proceed as though Absolutely. everything is on. So uh, please keep that in your mind. Uh, but also uh, pray for all of our staff. We're, we're trying to do the best we can uh, to quarantine, to cut down on the number of people here in the office. Uh, also the contact that we have. But I have encouraged my staff uh, in meetings yesterday to be in contact with each other, to contact uh, their students, their parents, and just so that we can let everybody know we're, we're still we're still going. We're not we're not stopping or, or just even slowing down uh, any more than we have to. So, John, is there anything else that you want to share? Something that maybe in your heart that maybe God shared with you during this time? Um, absolutely. So, what God's revealed to me um, throughout all of this is that yes, youth group is important. Yes. The church is important, uh, but the number one place that these students are, gonna exp uh, are getting exposure to Christ uh, is in the homes. Amen. And so before the pastor, before me, before uh, any of the staff, you have the opportunity to make such a bigger impact than what we can do once or twice a week. And so um, one of the reasons that I'm not as proactive in getting stuff organized for the students is because I really want to make sure that they spend time with their parents, with their grandparents, with their family members, um, because this is a unique opportunity. Um, and I say opportunity because God can turn all these terrible things that we see and, and use them for his good. And so we have this opportunity to make good of a terrible situation. Amen. All right. Very good. And that's the key thing that we want everybody to understand again, is that God's in control of this. Um, we want, we want, and I truly believe that God is allowing us to slow down mm -hmm. so that the family Absolutely. can come back together, to be focused a little bit more. Uh, I, I, I truly believe that. And so that's what we're hoping is happening. And that when we can all get back together, though, it's going to be a great celebration that we're going to look forward to. Yeah. But anyway, thank you, John, for, for coming. And, Thanks for having and me. I'll let you go back to where you enjoy it a little bit more. And that John told me that I haven't offered him to be able to be a part of this show and he says he's as much a part of it as he wants and that's oh, yeah. doing back there behind the scenes this and so, is sweet spot right here yeah there you go he, he likes he likes being in control of everything i think that's more what it is over here you lose control i'm finding that out right <laughs> carrie on this side of the camera i have no control of anything see i don't even know i have control of him zooming in on me this tight but anyway i we're going to take just a moment though before we close out like we always do i see he took my direction <laughs> But anyway, we're going to take just a moment. Oh, and, and before we do, uh, Joellen is, is there is speaking. Uh, two applications for Falls Creek. John, we'll get those to her. Uh, Stephanie, my uh, daughter, is watching. So, hey, Stephanie and Keith, good to have all of you here with us. But I always like to take just a moment uh, before we close out. And then I'm going to close out with some reminders of some things here in just a few moments. But the main thing is that we want to take some time to pray. Uh, we are living in very difficult times. I want us to pray for our leaders. Man, as I've shared with you before, I thought I'm under pressure trying to set up our calendars for the church and keep things going. That's nothing like what our, our president and our leaders are over there. Uh, then we have uh, our, our state, our, our governor and, and those, those leaders. And then even down to our community with our mayor, Stan Booker, and the things that he's having to decide and uh, working together with, with people. So I want to pray for them, but I also want to pray that God would show himself powerful through this. I, I shared with you Sunday morning that God can, with a spoken word, stop all of this. But he could also, through a revelation of, to doctors or scientists, a way to take care of this. Or he could even through us to calm us down through the storm. That's what I want us to be. So we're going to be praying tonight. So if you would... Um, would you um, just bow your heads and take a moment and, and pray with me? And then we're going to be able to, uh, then we'll wrap this thing up. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you. And God, we thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for renewing your mercies to us every single day. And God, thank you for being who you are and how powerful you are. And Lord, that you've not been weakened through this. You've not been confused through any of this. That God, you are sovereign and that you are all powerful through this. And so Father, I pray today that if it be your will, that God, you stop all of this. You bring this to an end. And Father, that with your spoken word, have this virus stop. But Father, I pray that as your will would be done, that Father, that you could also through revelation give wisdom to doctors and to scientists to be able to, to, be able to come up with the cure, the vaccine for it. Father, I believe you could do all of those. But Lord, if you choose in your sovereignty to, to continue in this, I pray then for patience for our leaders. I pray for our president. And God, the pressure that he is under, not just with the, the scheduling and not just with uh, the, the, the quarantining, but Father, with, with the economy and everything that, that seems to be piling on at this point, I pray for wisdom for our president. I pray, God, for strength and encouragement for him. I pray, God, that you would take the device of spirit in Washington and, God, you would just do away with it. And, God, you would bring a peace and a settledness to them so that, God, they could lead this nation, could make wise decisions. Father, I pray for our governor. I pray for him, God, that you would strengthen him and give him wisdom, God, as he deals with the situations here in Oklahoma. And that, God, you would just empower him with wisdom and patience. And, Father, I pray for our mayor, Stan. I pray for our city manager, Michael, that, God, you would just bless those two men and bless our city council. And, God, I pray that you would just ease their minds, ease their spirit. As, God, they're up against a tremendous, uh, tremendous enemy. And so, Father, I pray that you would just bless them with, with confidence of what they're doing. God, I pray for Satan to be bound away from them. I pray for those fiery darts, Lord, not to even make impact to them. Because, Lord, I know that any decision they make, someone's not going to be happy with it. So, Father, I pray that you would just allow them to have your wisdom and, God, make the decisions you want them to make. And that, Father, through this, that you could be glorified in those men's lives. And to, the, to that city council, Lord, for each member there. That, God, they could work together. And that we as a people would support them. And that, God, we could see uh, this curve be, be lowered down. And that, God, you could be honored and glorified through everything that we're doing. And, God, might we as a church not step back, but, Lord, might we now be bold. And might we now be willing to minister to people, not just to, to make the programs work, but, God, make the ministries work. That we could continue to reach people for Jesus. And, God, that's what you've called the church to do. So I pray, Lord, that we would do that as, as boldly and with as assurance as we possibly can. God, again, might you be glorified through First Baptist West. Might you be glorified through other churches. And God, might you be glorified through the actions of your people. God, we do love you. And we do thank you. And it's in Jesus' precious name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, I want to thank you for joining us. I know we had others. Cody, uh, Nadia is watching. Um, uh, Russell, Russ Blackwell, Marie Johns, thank you all for joining and, and continue to pray for each other, to be encouraged. A couple things that I want to mention to you before we close out is, first of all, uh, we do have our Sunday morning uh, live stream services. We're going to continue those. So those start at 1045. But also at 930, we have, through the Zoom uh, internet, we have our, I know we have six Sunday school classes that are active right now that will be having classes. We're posting them on our, on our web page. We're posting them on our Facebook pages for you to be able to select one of those Sunday school classes. So if you're maybe a member of a church that's not able to do those, then we want to encourage you to join us and go to one of those six classes on uh, Sunday morning at 930 through the Zoom uh, 
program that we have going on. So please, please join us with that. But do remember, uh, live stream services uh, Sunday morning uh, at, at 1045. Now, one thing that I want to do, I mentioned to you about our 1045 service this Sunday morning. Uh, Carrie has given me a great idea. And, and one of the things that, that I always do on the first Sunday of the month is I, I have children's time where I have all the kids come down from both services and they come down and they sit around me. Well, I'm not going to forget the kids this week. So all the families, have your kids with you Sunday morning. Uh, I would love for to know that you've been doing it anyway. But I want to have a special time like I always do. I want to sit down on the steps. I'm going to have your kids uh, gather around the television. I'm going to share some things with them. So we're, I'm looking forward to having some children's time. And I appreciate Carrie uh, reminding me of that uh, in our staff meeting yesterday. Uh, but we're going to have a children's time Sunday morning. So I hope you'll join with us on that as well. Then also the last thing is on Easter Sunday, we're going to have a very special service that day. Even though we can't have everybody there, uh, the praise team will be there and we're going to do some special things. One of the special things that I want to encourage you to do uh, is that we're going to be asking you to film for us a testimony. We're calling it the 10 second testimony because that's about really all the time that we would be able to have for you to be able to send us the, uh, the, the testimony of what Jesus has done in your life. And so what we're going to do as you send those in, John has said that he'd be able to stream together a, a video. And on Easter Sunday morning, we're going to play that as part of our worship time of, of you, our church, or not even if you're part of our church, but if you are a follower of Jesus and he's made a difference in your life, we're asking you to record with your phone or camera or whatever you can, 10 second testimony, very quickly sharing with us what Jesus has done for you in your life. Now, what we want you to do is once you film it, then we want you to send it to us and we'll, we'll post it up on our on our web page for you to know where to send it. That'll start tomorrow. It'll be on our web page. We'll put it on Facebook and also our Twitter. It'll also be on there. But it's First Baptist West Lawton, all one word, F FBW Lawton at gmail.com. So if you'll send that to us, uh, we'll be compiling those. And man, we hope we get a lot of them. We hope that a big part of our service is you giving a testimony of what Jesus Christ is doing in your life. So if you'll join us at, there it is on the screen, First Baptist West. Uh, Lawton at gmail.com FBW Lawton at gmail.com See John can do anything man we did, I didn't even tell him I was doing this and here it is but we want you to be able to video that and I'm looking forward man I, I got excited when they, when they brought it up in staff meeting we're talking about it and I'm excited now because I want to hear from you about what Jesus Christ has done many, many of you say oh, I don't have, I'm not good at my testimony 10 seconds to just tell what God has done for you in my uh, staff meeting yesterday, I used the devotion time to, to talk about the man who was possessed and how he wanted to, after Jesus healed him, he wanted to go with Jesus. Jesus said, no, you go back and you, you tell everybody what the amazing things that I've done for you. And man, what a, and it said that, that people marveled at him. See, here's what I want. I want people to be able to marvel at what Jesus Christ has done in your life. So would you do me that favor? Just a quick 10-second video. And again, it's called 10-Second Testimony. And you send that to this web page, uh, email address, and we're going to be able to turn this into a full-length video, and we're going to show it during our, our time, uh, during our Easter service. So do that for us, and man, we'd really appreciate it. We're going to be reminding you over the next week or so about doing that for us, okay? Well, listen, I want to thank all of you, Philip, Wes, uh, Marie, uh, Sandy, Trim, uh, Wendy, and John Corson. All of you that have joined in, if I miss your name, John Lewis, I see you there. Uh, Russell Black, Blackwell's there, I'd mention that. Uh, John Lewis, thank you uh, for coming. John, we're praying for you. I, I remember that Barry said that, uh, that you had called in on, uh, at the end of our service last week for us to pray. We have been praying for you, and we want to continue to pray for you, brother. Uh, even though you're not with us here at Lawton, we, you're still a part of our church family, and you're still part of uh, you're a good friend of mine, and uh, we, we count you as, as special. So we're going to keep praying for you. And all the others, we want to pray for you as well, okay? Hey, listen, our time is up. It went a little long tonight, but I hope that you stayed with us. Hope you've enjoyed this. We just want something to be a little fun, lighthearted, um, keep in contact with you because we got a lot of heavy stuff going on, amen? So we just want something, and that's what Facebook Live is all about. And thank you again so much for, for joining us. John, thank you again for everything you're doing. Carrie, thank you for hanging out with us and uh, getting everything to, to, to make sure it's following up well. So anyway, love all of you. Thank you, and join us 
Sunday morning, 1045, for our live stream service here at First Baptist West, where our logo and our motto and our vision is always where we love God, we love people, and we want to see lives changed. God bless you, and good night.